Greetings everyone, welcome back to another video, and we are back playing Katsuwa Shoujo, uh, the, the game where, yeah, <laughs> we're playing, we're playing, we're back playing Katsuwa Shoujo, uh, this is what we have right here, so if we come over to extras, I believe, um, and library, the library, um, no, okay, well, I, I fully completed Lily's path, as you can see, Lily's path is fully completed, <laughs> And we got Emmy's path that we're currently working on. There's still this much left, I guess. We are, uh, Hanukkah's I kind of accidentally started while trying to start Emmy's. Um, so I, or was it Lily's? I don't really remember who. But I accidentally started Hanukkah's. Um, so I got her cutscene and everything. But I'll do that some other time. There are the cinemas, as you can see, Hanukkah's intro, there's Emmy's, and then there's Lily's. And the gallery is where we have all the pictures. Since I'm playing the Steam version, there it's um it doesn't have the the sus scenes in it, but I kind of wanted to play the Steam version so I can actually save my data if I end up deleting the game. But yeah, and I don't know if there's achievements. I didn't check. I didn't check if there's achievements or not. Hold up, Katsuwa Shoujo. Yeah, there are achievements. There's 21 achievements. Okay, and I gotta get them all. Uh, reach Emmy's good ending. Reach Hanukkah's good ending. So yeah, I just gotta do that. Just get all the good endings and stuff. And the I just gotta get all the endings. <laughs> That's my goal. That is my goal for every game. <laughs> well, not every game, but most of the games that I play. I always want to complete them. For soda games are kind of hard to 100% them. So I'm usually, I'm just gonna play the game fully and then 100% them probably like in my spare time. Which I still gotta go back in 100% Persona 4. But I want to fully complete the game on Steam. So I got to go fully complete it on the Xbox. And I got to fully complete it on Steam. Because that's where I own both games. <laughs> and I finished the game on Steam. So it's a lot easier to fully complete it on I mean, I finished the game on Xbox. Whatever. Let's click load. And uh, right here. Right? Right here? September 13th? Uh, I think so. I think it's this one. Okay. <laughs> it says, a night of restlessness has left me feeling... Fairly groggy this morning. The events of the previous day keep intru intruding upon my mind. Okay, hold up. I want to move my move my model over. It's a bit too low there. Okay, there we go. Okay. The memory of how Emmy felt against me. The memory of our wrestling match. And most bothersome, the memory of her nightmare. She was in so much pain. I can't stop wondering what it must be like for her to wake up with nobody there. I need to close my mouth. blinding me. The shower shock uh the shower shocked me awake with hot water. Awake but still worried. What will happen today? Will things just go back to normal? End of uh end of the episode, back to the status quo. There was a connection yesterday. Something that nearly pushed us past pushed us past the boundaries of normal friendship. Would that have been so bad? My mind goes back to the look in Emmy's eyes after our pillow fight. It almost seems like she was daring me to go in. To go on. <laughs> almost. But I can't know for sure. Anyways, the Trek captain's probably um, first to hear her uh, affections. But even as I say that, my mind is already snorting derivously? What? <laughs> I'm just looking for an excuse. A reason for everything to go wrong. A reason to not try. It's not as if I've ever seen the two of them together outside of track practice, and clearly he's never visited Emmy, said as much herself. If they were close, surely he'd visit. I'm such a wuss. I ought to just go for it anyway. Damn the consequences. Uh, that's why Emmy would. That's what Emmy would do. I think. Hell, I know that's what she'd do. Which is partially why I'm convinced there's no interest on her and she hasn't acted either. Maybe because of this track captain, it's possible she's got a bit of an unrequited crush thing going on. But who would be able to clarify their relationship? It sure as hell can't be Emmy. She'd probably just laugh and ask why I wanted to know. I'm really not ready to answer that yet. Rin. Rin would probably just give me some cryptic answer or something, and, th and then with my luck, she just asked Emmy, who would ask me why I wanted to know, and I've already covered that problem. I wonder. 
Could I get away with, ask, uh, with asking the nurse? He seems pretty protective of Emmy. Of Emmy. I'm sure he'd know if something was up. And he owes me for not letting Emmy know he forgot to tell me about her being ill, so he'll keep quiet. What if he asks me uh, why I wanted to know, though? I can shake him off and just say I'm curious as a friend. He'll buy that, won't he? Of course. That's settled then. After the run, I'll I'll talk with him while Emmy while Emmy's waiting outside the office. Okay. Uh, there's four more choices left. There's four more choices left. So yeah. There was no sign of Emmy when I arrived at the track. Uh, is she still too ill? I decided to give her ten minutes. I'm a little early, and she was ill yesterday, so if she takes a while to show up, it shouldn't be surprising. Still, I'd hate to just waste my time. Oh crap. So I occupy myself by stretching and pacing back and forth anxiously. What if I went too far yesterday? What if she doesn't come because she's embarrassed? What if? Oh, you're early again, Hisao. I'm impressed. Just like that, I feel some of the tension leaving my body. Emmy seems to bright. Emmy seems to be bright and cheerful as usual, as usual, as usual, with no sign that she even was ill. The other day, much less, had a less than restful sleep. Still, I have to ask, sleep well last night? It's just a throwaway question, small talk. The sort of thing people ask someone they bump into in the cafe while getting their morning coffee. But not for us, at least not for me. I don't know if Emmy realizes that I'm actually concerned about how well she slept last night, but the question does give her pause. After a short moment of what seems like her genuinely pondering this, she nods. Yep, sure did. Was it because of me? Did I actually help? Or are you just saying that to get me to stop asking questions? Good ear. Emmy grins and begins warming up. So ready to begin? <laughs> Am I ready? Of course I'm ready. I was born ready. <laughs> Bro. Emmy laughs at my bravado and we take off running. Okay. I keep a steady pace the whole time, breathing steadily. Okay. I still feel dead at the end, but at least I don't gasp like a fish out of water now. Emmy is positively beaming after the run today. Nice job, Sal. You're improving. You'll be half as fast as me in no time. This last line is delivered with a teasing grin that I've grown all too used to. Oh, crap. Oh, oh how, is, how, how exciting. Yep. She begins to run her sprints while I take a cool down lap. She's really pushing herself today. By the time I'm done with my lap, she's laying across one of the bleachers looking exhausted. Goodness. Not pushing it, uh, not pushing it a little too much today, are you? Uh, you did just have a cold. You'll recall? You'll recall? <laughs> Emmy gives an annoyed snort and sits up. Bah! I'm just trying to make up for the lost time, that's all. I went twice as hard today, you know. A good run always gets the kinks out, you know. Clears out, uh, clears the mind too. Oh. Emmy nods vigorously. Yep. It's a great outlet for this for that sort of thing. Uh, she doesn't she does not explain further and I don't ask. I sus I suspect I know the real reason she went so hard today. Being sick had nothing to do with it. Something's bothering her. Maybe the nightmare, maybe something else. But it's not my place to pry. She'd tell me if she wanted to, me to know. I'm sure that comes in handy. You have no idea. Uh, the sincerity in her voice confirms my suspicion. The only problem is, even though I know she'd tell me if she wanted me to know, I still want to know. Something on your mind then? Emmy doesn't seem surprised by my question. Instead, she shrugs. Nah, it's nothing uh, worth getting worried about. She seems as if she's trying to convince herself as much as she's convincing me. I open my mouth to ask if yesterday is responsible for her current state of mind, but think better of it. Too much risk of, of her taking the question the wrong way. Besides, I'm not even sure myself what to think about yesterday. Really, I can only get about a, as far as how it felt to have Emmy sleeping next to me before my brain shuts down. Having her before me 
now covered in sweat and looking uh, rightly at me. Uh, worriedly at me, right? Uh, she's making it difficult to think. Yeah, I hear you. We better hurry to see the nurse. We're running short on time. Aren't we always? Emmy laughs at this. A droid chuckle that uh, that seems most un emmy like Too true. Uh, for a brief moment, she looks old, worn down by some old hurt. But like, but just like yesterday, I can almost see her shouldering the burden and sh uh, straightening up slightly. And then she's back to being at me again. Come on then, he saw it. Race ya. Bro. With a sudden smile, she darts off. Hey, no fair. I take off after her, knowing I won't catch her, but not caring. Even if there's no chance of catching her, I'll still run after her. Okay. Emmy's waiting for me at the door as I arrive. Well, well. Look who's finally shown up. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy your victory while you can. Emmy grins as the nurse pokes his head out of the door. Well, there you are. Come on in, Hisao. In what has been a familiar routine by now, he checks my blood pressure and my heart rate. A bit fast today, isn't it? Yeah, I kind of raced Emmy here. The nurse laughs. Oh, damn, the music's very loud. Hold on. <sighs> okay. That's never a good idea. He leans in to whisper to me in a conspir conspiratory manner. I don't know if you've heard, but um, he's a bit of a track star. <laughs> I reel back in mock surprise. Really? She never mentioned it before. <laughs> the two of us share a laugh. Bro, did she do okay? Cold seems, cold seems to bother her? Why don't you ask her? He rolls his eyes in exasperation. Of course I'm not gonna- Ah, fuck. Oh crap. <laughs> of course I'm going to ask her too, but she'll tell me that she didn't have any problems regardless of whether or not she did. So I'm asking you because you're her friend and would probably tell me if she had trouble today. When he puts it that way, it makes a lot more sense. She seems pretty good today, if a little more tired than usual. She was already feeling better when I dropped off or dropped by yesterday, so I'm not that surprised. The nurse nods, though I notice he tenses slightly when I mentioned yesterday's visit. Oh, that's good to hear. I figured it was just a 24-hour thing. Emmy tends to recover quickly from colds and the like. Hey, speaking of Emmy, are she and the track captain, well, you know. A look of suspicion crosses his face. Why do you ask? Well, it's just that they seem kind of close and I was curious, you know. And I never asked her because that would be kind of embarrassing. So far, so good. Now to really sell it. Besides, I think they'd make a cute couple. <laughs> The nurse laughs. <laughs> well, I don't suppose you're the first to think that. But I think I can say with some certainty that the two of them will never do anything like that. Certainty? Yep. Not that I could tell you, of course. Confidentiality and all that. Yeah, right. You just like holding a secret over my head. That too. Right, get out of here. I'm a busy man, you know. I roll my eyes at his last statement and head out the door. Moder I'm motioning to Emmy to go in. The whole time, I'm trying to keep from doing a cel celebratory dance. The two of them will never do anything like that. That's precisely the sort of thing I wanted to hear. I'm half tempted to make some sort of move on Emmy right now, but I think the nurse would probably disapprove. Besides, I still don't know exactly how Emmy feels about me. I mean, it's obvious that she cares about me as a friend, but something more than that. I can't be certain. Even so, I can't help but feel hopeful. I just I just need to figure out a good time to tell Emmy exactly how I feel. That puzzle should keep me occupied for the rest of the day, at least. Yeah. Uh, the rooftop is completely deserted. Normally, I could count on Rin to be up here before me, but she's strangely absent. I wonder if she decided to accompany Emmy to the cafeteria for once. That seems pretty unlikely, but it's all I can think of right now. Part of me wants to go look for Rin, but a far larger part of me is too pleased with the way the sun feels on my skin to care. I pick idly at my lunch while I wait for Emmy and Rin to show up. 
It does not take long for me to hear the sounds of someone coming up the stairs. I wait until the door begins to open before talking. Took you long enough. Keep me, uh, keeping me waiting for you, honestly. Two of you are... Huh? Well, that's odd. The only person standing in the doorway is Emmy, who looks mildly confused. What do you mean, huh? It's me, you know, Emmy. We run in the mornings. She grins, and I feel a heart. I feel my heart jump slightly in my chest as I sigh. Um, yeah, I knew that. I'm just confused. Where's Rin? Emmy grins in a. Emmy's grin is replaced by a rather guilty-looking expression. Yeah, about that. I kind of, uh, I kind of sort of gave her my cold. So how'd you give her your cold? How? Real quick, hold up. I need to get some water. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> God, I'm, I, I just woke up. It's, um, uh, it's quite kind of early in the morning. I don't know. It's like, it's 12 actually. It's 12. <laughs> oh, whatever. Oh dear. Am I at risk too? It would make sense after all. Emmy and I were in close contact the other day. So what did she and Rin do that got her ill? Steady on, old lad. Don't go down that road. <laughs> Rin just probably got a worse immune system than me. Emmy seems shocked by my comment like she hadn't considered that before. I hope not. I'll feel terribly if you get ill because of me, he sal. Emmy looks horrified. And then quickly shifts into a more angry expression. He sal, you stop getting sick this instant. You won't. I won't have it. <laughs> Impulsively, she seizes me by the collar. Are you listening to me? He sal's immune system. Get your ass in gear. I gave a smart salute. <laughs> okay. A duly noted, ma'am. And I step back and nod, satisfied. Good. You are not allowed to miss any of our morning runs, after all. But you missed a morning run. Emmy crosses her arms and looks at me hotly. Yes, but that's a special case. It was me, and not you. That's not an explanation at all. Emmy looks flabbergasted. <laughs> You're kidding, right? That explanation makes perfect sense. No, it doesn't. It's a blatant double standard. I don't see what that has to do with anything. Oh, fine. Emmy seems pleased by her victory. Anyway, is Rin going to be okay? She's not terribly ill, right? Emmy shakes her head. No, nope, she'll be fine. I got her some cold medicine. That should help her. Although, I probably should have made sure she didn't try to take them all at once. Um, okay. She's done it before, you know. Somehow, I don't find this all that surprising. I doubt Rin is one to pay attention to maximum dosages and such. You should probably check on her later, then, uh, just to make sure. Emmy shrugs. I'll stop by after practice. She'll be fine until then. I nod, figuring that line of conversation is over. The only problem is I don't know what else to think about. So, you got any more track meetings coming up? This is a terribly roundabout way of trying to see if she's free on the weekend. If she's free, then maybe I can ask her on a date or something. Well, assuming I can get myself to actually form the words. Emmy shakes her head. Nah, not for another couple weeks, I think. The season's winding down. Oh yeah. I came I came in uh in right in oh fuck. <laughs> I came in right in the middle of things. I uh, didn't I? Does that mean exams are coming up soon? I should probably look into that. What do you do on the weekends if there's not a meeting? Or not meet? An eyebrow grows up, and Emmy gets a teasing look on her face. You're awfully inquisitive today, aren't you? I shrug and hope it looks casual. Just making conversation. Uh, I don't know what it's like to be a track star after all. Flattery. She waves a hand idly. Oh crap. I'm not actually that good, you know. I just happen to see uh, you just happen to see me on a good day, is all. You liar. Ha. Huh. Well. Uh. Yeah. But, hum uh, but humility is the sign of a good athlete, okay? At least that's what my dad used to say. She shrugs and try tries unsuccessfully to hide the rather troubled expression her, fa uh, her face has taken on. Hey, what's up? You seem bothered by something. Emmy starts to deny, then sighs in defeat. 
I wonder if she's too tired from being sick to get herself to deny it like usual. Or if she actually just trusts me enough at this point to open up. Well, you remember last night? Do I ever. I settled for nothing. I settled for nodding, however. That's not the first time that's happened to me. Actually, I get them kind of... She pauses as if it suddenly occurred to her what she's doing. It's almost like she's breaking some sort of personal rule here. But she starts up again, choosing her words carefully. Well, not often, but on occasion. It's just been one of those weeks where that's what happens. Sai escapes her and she looks terribly frustrated. I reach over and give her a hug, which, unlike last in time, doesn't seem to shock her. Instead, she seems to relax as my arms wrap around her. We stay that way for a while. Hey, you know, I was serious last night. You really can't talk to me if stuff like this is bothering you. It's always difficult to do this sort of thing solo, you know? Emmy smiles and breaks the embrace, but stays leaning on my shoulder. Thanks, Hisao. I'll be fine, I think. I can already see her uh, reassembling herself, getting ready to bottle it all up again. Guess that's... I guess that topic's closed for now. So hey, give any more thought to that career survey? Can't say I have. I don't tend to plan... I don't tend to plan very far ahead, you know. Although, I suppose I could at least start looking into college, huh? I shrug. I suppose, unless you were serious about that pirate thing. Unless I checked, pirates didn't have much need for universities. Unless, unless there's like a pirate university out there somewhere. Emmy giggles and starts to look a little like her old self, but there's a new element of her expression. Impish, that's how I'd describe it. Emmy looks impish, uh, looking up at me with her head nested, nestled in my, into my shoulder. Would you come with me if I ran off to be a pirate? Probably not. <laughs> of course I would. Who in their right mind would pass up the opportunity to be pirates with you? Well, when you put it that way, I'm not sure. She giggles again. I notice that my heart seems to have sped up. It's probably due to Emmy's uh, proximity to me. That hit, that hint of strawberries again. I can't help but grin as I gaze down at her. She's happy again. Hey, he Sal. Hmm. If you're going to kiss me, you should probably do it soon. I think the lunch bell is about to ring. My thoughts grind to a sudden halt. I'm pretty sure my mouth is hanging open in shock. All I can manage is a strangled huh. You muse Emmy. Uh, that muses Emmy even more. You were thinking about it, weren't you? She sits up, bringing her face level with mine. I'd probably enjoy it, you know. You're a really... Well, she briefly composes herself, looking like she's about to say something important. If you hadn't figured out by now, I think I've developed a bit of a crush on you. <laughs> You're going to have to do something about that. At the time, uh, her... Uh, this time her grin, uh, short circulates, uh, short cir short cir circuits as <laughs> several important thoughts process. At some point, I turn towards her, and at another point, her arms move to around my neck. At yet another, my arms wrap around her waist. I'll be damned if I could tell pre precisely when that happened. Because at that moment, there's only a voice in the back of my head yelling at me to kiss her. I look into Emmy's eyes. There it is. The thing I saw yesterday on the bed. It's there again. It suddenly strikes me that she's worried that I'd re I'll reject her. What a silly worry for her to have. Ha! 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 Hold up. I'm moving myself over here a bit. Myself right there. Her lips taste faintly of strawberries. She leans into the kiss and her arms tighten around the back of my head, making sure that I don't pull away. Not that there was any danger of that. Uh, there's a churning feeling in my gut. The world falls away. There's uh, just me and her and this bench. My arms tight, uh, tighten, drawing her waist closer 
and trans tranced by the feel of her. I inhale her scent. Actually, I can just hide this, right? There we go. I'll just hide it like that. Move over here because my model kind of covers a bit of the image. Okay, but I think that should do. That should do. That should do. I inhale her scent. My mind try trying desperately to memorize everything about how she tastes, um, how she smells, and how she feels. Okay. The ringing of the bells snap us both back to reality, and we break the kiss. Emmy's cheeks are slightly flushed, and she seems to be catching her breath. In her defense, so am I. We stand there for a few moments, trying to wrap our heads around what we've just done. Emmy is the first to break the silence. So, want to grab dinner after I'm done with practice? What a coincidence. I was about to ask you the same thing. Well, actually, I suppose it was going to be some kind of proper date on the weekend or something, but thought was there, I think. Emmy gives me a playful shove. Yeah, right. You were still in shock from how incredibly awesome I am at kissing. We began to head down the stairs back to our respective classrooms. Weren't you going to go see Hanako after practice? <laughs> oh, not Hanako. Fucking Rin. I'm, I'm confusing. Okay, whatever. Hey, I didn't see you uh, talking immediately afterwards either. That I didn't. See you after practice, Hisao. She leans in quickly and gives me a quick kiss in the middle of the hallway. Sending me into another brief state of mental freefall. <laughs> As I head into my classroom, a giggling Misha greets me. Why, Hik-chan, you romantic you. <laughs> did you confess on the rooftop, did you? Or actually, I think it was the other way around. It sends Misha into a fresh fit of laughter. Young love is so unpredictable, isn't it? Uh, this be- uh, this beginning at Misha, or this being Misha, I suppose I should have expected her to tease me over the, over this, I guess. Before I can respond, uh, Muto enters the room and Misha skips off to her seat, giggling all the while. I suspect that I'll get a lot of that sort of conversation now, especially seeing as how Emmy kissed me right in the middle of the hall. But somehow, I don't care about that. For the first time since arriving here, my heart feels light. Ah! It's the next act. Okay, <laughs> we're on to the next act. I think this is the final act, but I don't know. No, uh, I don't know how many acts there are. I don't know if there's the same amount of acts every, uh, I don't think I can check here. Uh, yeah, no, I can't check. Let me just save right here real quick. Create a new save. Beginning of the act, so why not save? But yeah, I don't know how many acts there are in each, um, in, e in each route. I don't know if some have more acts or some have less acts. I don't know. But I think, uh, the Lily one had four acts. I don't know, though. I don't know. My head, my head's in a spin all through Mito's cla Muto's class. I'm going to have dinner with Emmy. Who wants to be my girlfriend, no less? A date? And then she kissed me. That kiss. I keep going back to it, playing it over in my mind again and again. Everything about that moment felt so right. My mind drifts off, lost in thought of Emmy. Lost in thoughts of Emmy. That guy. Hello? It seems like I've drifted a bit too far. Huh, what? Uh, egg, egg had to. <laughs> You've contracted some kind of amnesia. Someone get the nurse. The class chuckles at Muto's antics. Sorry, sir. Hmm. Won't happen again. And all, uh, won't happen again and all that, right? <laughs> but what? Exactly. Muto brightens considerably. Well, lovely to hear. I'd hate to, I'd hate to have my star people slacking off after all. I have been doing well, but I hardly qualify as a star pupil, I think. I'm fairly certain that this class is the sort is that is the sort that everyone does well in. It's just memorizing formulas. True to my word, I managed to pay attention for the first for the rest of the class. Okay. Uh Nakai, may I have a word with you? I wonder if I'm in trouble for earlier. Um sure. Am I in trouble? Mato looks genuinely confused for a moment. Beg your pardon. He tilts his head to one side and thinks for a moment. Oh, that. No, no. You're not in any sort of trouble. There's just a question I want to ask you. Uh, what's that? Nothing terrible. I was just wondering what your plans for after graduation are. Are you going to university? Yeah, I guess. I can't really see a reason not to go. Uh, given any thought to what you'll study, 
Not really, no. I figured I'll... I figure I'll come up with something when I get there. Muto laughs. Picking things as they come, eh? I'd argue against it, but that's how I did things when I went to university. Well, not really. I knew I'd go into a, into a science. I just wasn't sure which one. Ended up with physics, but uh, could just as well have gone to astronomy or what, what have you. Actually, I did go for chemistry first, but there were all sorts of things. Muto trails off and frowns slightly. It takes a minute for him to recover his train of thought, and I wait patiently for him to continue. So anyway, I did a lot of physics as well, because I had an interest in that, but I wasn't sure if it was for me. So I went back to chemistry, and here we are, yes. He smiled at me enthusiastically, as if waiting for me to confess that here is where we are. Somehow I get the feeling that Muto had a plan for this conversation, but I'll be damned if I can figure it out. I'm sorry for not following you. Muto frowns and, and rubs his chin a bit, looking perplexed. Then he snaps his fingers as if he remembered uh, what the point of all this was. Right, yes, you. Me? Yes, you should look into studying one of those sciences. You're fantastic at it. Unless you'd rather go into math. Muto makes a sour face. Not a big fan of straight math. I always like the experiments more than the proofs. I prefer just math. I hate science. Uh, you're saying I should study science at university? Muto seems thrown off balance by my question. Well, sort of. Well, for me, I'm going to go study art at university. That's what I'm doing. Um, yeah. Damn. I have to go to university next year, I have to start next year and shit, and like, I'm not prepared for that. Could also join the science club. Trouble is, there's not actually a science club, but there could be. You could even be a charter member. Founding father. Of course, you'd need to find other members. Well, only if you wanted to. We could just start it, start it up with the two of us. And, um... I could give you things to read, and we could talk about them. Er, uh, I could help you get ready for university and such as well. Wait. Muto rummages around in his briefcase and tosses me a book. Read that. If it's interesting, then we can talk about it. A Brief History of Time. I don't know if I actually want to read this, but Muto seems pretty excited about it. What's it about? Time, space, space-time, black holes and such. And it's not that dense. Just to see if that sort of thing interests you, you you understand? Hang around after class and we can either discuss it or I can show you how to make explosives in the lab. Bro, what? He waved his hand at me quiz at my quizzical expression. Joking, sorry. Still, I've kept you here long enough for now. Think about science as a career path, Nakai. Uh, I think you'd enjoy it. Um, okay, I will. Thank you for the book. Yeah. I leave the classroom and look up at the clock. Uh, quite a chunk of time to kill until Emmy's out of practice. Guess I'll give this book a look. I should probably shower as well. Showering before dates only proper, right? I head back to the dorms. I have been on one date in seventh grade, and that's it. Um, yeah. Technically, I was one. On, I was on in eighth grade, but. Uh, their parents were there, but their parents didn't know we were going out. So I don't know. It was just kind of it's very weird. Um, but yeah, I wonder where I'm supposed to meet Emmy. Anyway, she said after practice, but she didn't say where I should find her. I guess I can just swing by the track. That's probably best anyway. If she needs a shower, I can just wait for her in her room or something. Or in the hallway, I guess. That would be better as well. I take a quick shower. Remember to take my medication once I hop out. Now for a look at this book. Bro's gonna read the book forever. I wake with a start. Shit, what time is it? A glance at the clock reveals that I've been sleeping for nearly an hour. Thank goodness. Emmy's practice should be finishing up soon. I throw on some casual clothes and head for the track. That book was so boring, he fell asleep. <laughs> Somehow I get the feeling we won't be doing anything fancy for dinner. Emmy doesn't strike me as a very fancy sort of person. Still, I suppose there is a lot I have yet to know about Emmy. Despite our newfound closeness, I still feel like I don't know her as well as I should. Oh well, I have a lot of time to fix that. 
To be honest, I'm looking forward to getting to know her more. I'm so caught up in my own thoughts that I hardly register that I'm already at the track. Yeah, with Lily, we had a very fancy dinner. <laughs> what a very fancy place, bro. Emmy is nowhere to be found. I don't see any sign, sign of the track team. This could be embarrassing. I turn to head towards the girls' dormitory when I hear a shout. Hey, he's Sal. I turn around to see Emmy making a beeline for me with a gym bag slung over her shoulder. She changed into some decidedly more casual clothing. A pair of shorts and an olive green top. Her running uh, blades have been replaced with uh, by more realistic looking legs. That probably wouldn't fool anyone. I mean, doesn't seem to care about that. A fact which makes me smile. Hey, you came. I mean, I figured you would, but still. I suddenly feel myself wrapped in a rather affectionate hug. And it proves to be impossible for me to keep what must be the world's largest grin off my face. Well, of course I came. It, I'd be crazy not to, right? Emmy ponders for a moment. You know, that's true. I mean, I'm pretty amazed after all. I shrug in response. I certainly think so. It's an offhand remark, which is why I'm surprised to see that it seems to have caught Emmy by surprise. She blush, blah, blah, blah. She blushes and smiles warmly at me before planting a kiss on my lips. Now it's my turn to be surprised. Emmy sits back, resting her weight on her back heel, uh, looking pleased with herself. My brain fumbles for an appropriate response. I should compliment you more often. Emmy laughs and gives me a playful shove. Jerk. I throw an arm around Emmy's shoulders and am pleased when she immediately leans into me. As if it were the most natural thing in the world. So where to? I'm not actually sure. Where do people go on dates around here anyway? That's a damn good question. I've got a no idea. Why don't we just head down to the aura market and grab something portable? Emmy's face brightens at this idea. A picnic! I think you're onto something, he sal. Emmy uh, snakes her arms around my waist and we begin to head for the front gate. And entirely un I'm entirely unsure of what I'm meant to do in this situation, but at least Emmy seems to be equally clueless. Despite the relaxing feeling of being with Emmy, I can s I still can help can't help feel a little tense. What if I do something wrong? I'd hate to make an ass out of myself. The trip to the R market is, is accompanied by Emmy's chatter about how practice went. I keep it quiet for the most part, merely enjoying the warmth of being around Emmy. We get a few odd looks from passerbys, but I don't mind. We wind up buying some bread and noodles, reali realizing too late that we cannot actually cook the ladder in the park. Oh well, I'll make it for lunch or something. That'll work. The park is located after a brief loss of directions that I blame entirely on Emmy. She of course blames me. We find a spot beneath a tree and sit down. I lean back against the trunk, Emmy sits across from me. I guess we should have brought a blanket or something to sit on, huh? Emmy shrugs. I don't mind. Neither do I. Emmy tosses me a package of bread and we dig in. Curry bread, interesting. I guess I wasn't really paying attention to what I grabbed in the store. Hey Sal, you look like your bread's a little spicy. I shake my head, trying in vain to keep an image of ma manliness. Not nah, hardly spicy at all. I see, I see. That must be why your face has gotten so red. Yes, exactly. The lack of spice has uh, gotten my blood up. Because of the disappointment. <laughs> Emmy laughs and, and swallows the last of her bread. Well, if you can't handle it, I'll be glad to take it off your hands. I mean... Emmy mock pouts, causing me to nearly choke on my bread with laughter. Look, oh come on, he sal. Aren't you supposed to be uh, concerned with making sure I've got enough to eat now? We're dating, you know. <laughs> you know, Emmy looks troubled all of a sudden. I can't say I feel any different. Hmm? What do you mean by that? What makes this a date? It's just what we have done, uh, it's just what we would have done anyways, really. But this should feel different because... Before we had lunch, we were friends, and now we're a level above friends. You sound like Rin. Laughter escapes Emmy and Grin. Uh, Emmy's grin? I don't know. <laughs> she might have put the thought into my mind. 
Uh, we've talked about that sort of thing before. Really about me? Not really, just stuff, really. Rin thinks that the change the change of labels from friends to girlfriends seems arbitrary most of the time. Like, there's no difference between the two. I can think of at least one, you know. You don't tend to kiss your friends quite as much. For the second time today, Emmy blushes slightly and giggles. I suppose you're right. Exactly, I'm always right about things like this. Emmy rolls her eyes and chuckles. I guess you're pretty smart, huh? I'm not in agreement. Yep. Even Muto thinks so. He thinks I should go into some scientific study after graduation. Emmy raises an eyebrow. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm thinking I actually might do just that. Really, the more I consider the idea, the more it appeals me. I make a mental note uh, to look into it a little more closely. So, what are you thinking of doing after graduation? Still planning on running? Emmy shrugs, seeming almost a bit hesitant. I don't know if I'm good, if I'm good enough, and I, and I can find a team. I guess you mean you aren't sure. I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. Really? You probably should know graduation isn't that far off. Emmy fidgets a little nervously. Yeah, well, it's far enough, right? Besides, I've got another thing to think about. There was a mischievous flash behind Emmy's eyes, and I suddenly feel myself gloriously pinned against the tree. Like you're making sure this is a real date, right? I mean, if we don't kiss, then it's not a date after all, right? Suppose uh, strawberries and curry. Not the best combination, but I don't think I mind. Emmy sits back on, on my legs and grins again. There, science would approve, right? I have the oddest mental image of Muto nodding seriously and making a mark on some checklist. I can't help laughing at the idea. Well, I'll admit, this is the first time I've ever witnessed a kiss being met with uh, laughter. Should I feel offended? <laughs> no. I'm sure science approves. Emmy beams at me, and I find it increasingly difficult to keep my brain functioning properly. Oh, good. It is, uh, it is at this point I notice that Emmy has stolen the remainder of my curry bread. While I was otherwise occupied with images of teaching of teacher we of teachers wielding clipboards. <laughs> hey, Emmy tries to look innocent, but considering she's just crammed the last bits of my bread into her mouth, it does not appear to be working. Sorry, couldn't fish thief! A shrug from my companion is all I get in response. Bro stole my bread! Use your feminine wiles on me. I wasn't that hungry anyway, but I still feel that the point needed needs to be made. Emmy seems confused by the phrase feminine wiles, but the understanding dawns on her on her features after a moment though. After moments though. Was it anything of the sort? Uh, you were laughing. You were laughing. Feminine wiles don't involve laughing. I guess I can't argue with this. That doesn't change your theory. Emmy laughs at my injured tone and gives me a playful shove. Fine. You can have the instant noodles. Are you kidding? That stuff's terrible. If anything, you should definitely eat it as punishment. Another laugh from the girl sitting on my legs, both of which had fallen asleep by now. Well, I twitch one leg and try waking it up, which has the unintended effect of unbalancing Emmy, who falls on the side with, with a startled eep. Bro just fell. I'm sorry about that. Leg fell asleep on me. Emmy remains on the ground giggling. I stand up a little sh shakily, feeling the nerves of my nerves in my leg returning to normal. My eyes wander over the scenery before fixing on the figure of Emmy. I was yet to get up. She's on the floor. She's on the floor. Oh, I bet. She's on the floor. Look at that. She's on the floor. Zooming out. How dare you zoom out like that? Okay, whatever. Her hair is uh, splayed out around her head. Her arms are spread and laughter is bubbling up through her mouth. Everything about Emmy seems uh, condensed into this one image. Her energy, her spirit, her childish giggling. The urge to lay down on the grass with her rises swiftly from the back of my mind to um, to the forefront of my thoughts. And indeed, I am convinced that I would love nothing more than to do just that. Unfortunately, the sun has set and it is probably time for us to get back to the dormitories. While well, Emmy may be happy to stay out here all night, I don't think I have the ability. Besides, homework soon beckons. 
It wouldn't make sense to start thinking about things like university and then slack off, would it? I extend a hand to Emmy to help her get up. We should probably get going. Emmy makes a sour face. You're right. She grabs my pro profit what? hand and I pull her to her feet and, and into a hug. This time, I'm the one who kisses her, unable to resist having Emmy against me. Seems a shame to leave, you know. Yeah, it does. But if we don't get back to the school soon, we'll probably get into trouble. Emmy pokes me in the rib playfully. And you need to do your homework, I'm sure. Sadly, you're absolutely right. I throw my arm around her shoulder and we make and we make the trek back to the school, accompanied by occasional bouts of laughter, as our conversation jumps from subject to subject. Everything from the running to school to the peculiar peculiar way that one of the cafeteria workers smells. What? All too soon, we find ourselves outside the door dormitory building. Well, I guess I'll be going then. I guess so, huh? And he grins at me again with that mischievous look. Are you going to be able to survive without me? I laugh. I'm sure I'll manage. How terrible. Aren't you supposed to say something like, I'll be counting on, uh, I'll be counting the seconds you are away? No, I don't think so. Then he pulls me down into a quick goodbye kiss and steps back and steps back looking unexpectedly shy. Thanks for dinner. I really had fun. Honestly, I did. So did I. I think we should, uh, I think we should have to do it again sometime. I think we shall have to do it again, but I don't know. Um, Emmy laughs at my deadpan delivery and nods. See, uh, see you bright and early tomorrow morning, right? You gotta run off that bread after all. Of course, despite the fact that you ate most of it. Yes, despite that. See you later, Hisao. Okay. As Emmy turns to head inside, I notice something weird. Something so weird that I'm surprised I didn't notice it earlier. She's limping slightly. Fa uh, favoriting the left leg. Hey, Emmy. Is your leg okay? Emmy looks confused, or at least fakes confusion. What are you talking about? Your right leg, you're limping. There's the briefest flash of concern on Emmy's face. Either she didn't want me to know, or she didn't think I'd notice. Or I prefer to think she just didn't realize it. Oh, that. She shrugs casually. Must have gotten knocked a little out of alignment during the picnic. No idea what would have caused that, of course. I think back to being pinned under the tree. You should have told me. We could have stopped to fix it, you know. Emmy waves a hand airily. Nah, it's not that big of a deal. Don't worry about it, okay, Hisao? It's fine. Why do I get the feeling that she's convincing herself as well as me? Okay, let me save right here. Because this is a choice. I feel like one of these will give me a, uh, a not so great ending at the end, but I don't know. According to this, it says press Emmy. Um, press Emmy. Are you absolutely sh are you absolutely sure? Uh, you don't want to go ahead and adjust it before heading up the stairs. You could get hurt if you don't, right? I said it was fine, Isao. Seriously, don't worry about it. I've got some ex I got some experience in in these matters after all. I suppose so. Emmy grins reassuringly. Honestly, Isao, I appreciate the concern, but I really am okay. Now, really, I need to get going. Uh, your attempts to keep me around are doomed to fail. Of course. Uh, just prolonging the goodbye, I suppose. Another grin lightens up at Emmy's face. Good night, Hisao. Good night. As she limps inside, I find myself hoping she's okay despite her assurances that she's fine. I think I can call this a successful date. Hell, any day that ends with Emmy pinning me under a tree to kiss me, I can't be a bad. Can't be bad, can it? I head back to my room, mentally thanking the gods that Kenji doesn't ambush me, ambush me in the hallway and get started on my homework. Kenji, and she comes and ambushes me in the hallway. She's like, so I don't, I, don't, I don't really remember what Kenji says. Um, talking about like freaking aliens or something. I don't know. But let me save it uh, again right here. I just saved it over there because of the other choice. But yeah, guys, I'm gonna end today's uh video here. Um, Katsuwa Shoujo. Next video will probably be a clan ad video because I want to I want to play clan ad again <laughs> Clan ad's a long game. It's like 50 hours or so and I don't really know how the um, Like how it works with the whole um The whole roots thing. So yeah, I want I want to check that out. Uh, I want to try Yeah, I don't know. I just want to continue playing clan ad. Either way guys, 
Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and of course, I will see you guys next time. Peace out and bye bye